so Gary, I, I've never really so much disagreed uh, with the idea that we human beings are basically bacteria with brains. Um, but when you say that, um, you mean it less in a in an objective scientific sense than you do in a you know pejorative uh, inflammatory sense. Um, you take that as something negative about what we are, as something um, you know that reflects the fact that we're just the product of crude, blind, stupid forces, um, and that to get any sense of uh, empowerment from a view of nature contrary to that one is just delusion, delusional, um, you know, fairy tale, um, magical kind of religious thinking. And um, getting back to just that description, bacteria with brains as scientific, let's look at bacteria. They're actually pretty uh, complex, and, you know, I, I know we've been over you know, many times how uh, bacteria are necessary even today for any life to exist, um, both because, as you mentioned, they supply us with our oxygen, but they also digest our food. Um, almost all uh, animals require bacteria to digest food, even insects, even um, termites have a certain species that they are in a symbiotic relationship with, certain species of bacteria that live in their gut to help them digest wood. Um, but that aside, bacteria also, it turns out, uh, have the ability to predict the type of environment they will be in before they actually get there. Uh, this is a story I just read earlier today. Um, I'll post the link to it. Basically, when uh, E. coli are eaten by, by say, a human being, um, they have to transition from being uh, aerobic, meaning they use oxygen to respirate uh, and to, you know, keep their me metabolism going when they're outside of my stomach. But when I swallow them and they get into my stomach, all of a sudden they have to transition into an anaerobic mode of respiration um, or metabolism. And so it would seem that if they just waited until they were in my stomach to do this, then a lot of them would die off and they might even not survive at all as a colony. Um, but it turns out with the aid of some experimental uh, evidence and computer uh, analysis that uh, bacteria are actually able to interpret the rise in temperature associated with being in my mouth with the eventual um, lack of oxygen that results from being swallowed. And this isn't like they are, you know, learning like an organism with a brain learns. They are learning based on uh, a phylogenetic inheritance from their ancestors that uh, after generations of selection, um, they have figured out this, this relationship between the sign of temperature rise and the meaning, or what it points to, which is oxygen, is soon going to be uh, non-existent. And this cues the bacteria to respond by changing its um, the types of uh, proteins that it synth synthesizes from its genome. Um, so bacteria aren't that, that dumb, really. And um, I think the, the sentience, the, the ability to interpret signs in the environment, um, goes all the way down to this single cellular level. It's not something that just uh, organisms with brains have. Um, so we are bacteria with brains, and I don't take that as an insult. That's um, a testament to how complex and intelligent life is.